predicated of that being. If you equalize all the traits, you are literally talking about the same thing. You're talking about equalizing its location, the molecules that compose it, every single thing down to A equals A. You yeah, but not, not the value properties, right? But if you're saying that the value property is the trait, then you're naming a trait and you're rejecting P2. Yeah, but that's the point. That's the, that's the idea but behind particularism. When, okay, when but, they... but wait, I, I want to make sh sorry, I just want it, to, it's, it's not useful to talk about particularism without actually just getting the argument clearly on the table and understood, right? So I just want to make sure we're, we're following each other here. So if someone says that humans have value and they say there's no trait, what, what happens from there is you can say, okay, well, if there's no trait, you can switch all of the traits, but the human retains value. If you can switch all of the traits while the human retains value, then you're saying animals have value because the human is reducible to an animal while retaining value. To then say that animals are valueless produces logical contradiction. So the thing you can't be saying is that humans have value, there's no trait, and I assign differential moral status. That's where you enter contradictory territory. If you're going to say there is a trait and the trait is just my subjective assignment of moral value, that can be a consistent position. That just has some weird outcomes. Well, I'm just saying that two things can be identical uh, in terms of anything other than their value properties, right? But yet have different value properties. Yep, and it's not if if you're saying that the trait is just the value I assign to them, your position isn't contradictory. It's just saying that the you're rejecting the second premise by naming the trait my subjective assignment of value. Yeah, but that's the particularist view. Okay, so just to be clear, that's not actually picking a logical problem. This is what Avi's trying to get at. That's not actually picking a logical problem with the structure of name the trait. I wasn't that's saying there was a logical problem with the structure. Oh, okay. no, fair, fair enough. What you're, what you're all- at the yeah. outset that the argument yep. could be formally valid. And right. what I and what I said from the outset is I'm just going to go in here, interject into your conversation with Avi, just so we can tell precisely where the disagreement is. So the disagreement is not on the validity of the argument. The disagreement is on the fact that you would reject the second premise and you would reject it by saying, I name the trait my subjective assignment of moral value. You could put it that way. Okay, I'll pass it back to Avi. Um, and oh, obviously, yeah, the, the, I mean, if I continue, just the path that I would go down is just check for consistency. If you subjectively say it's fine to murder a million people, is it fine? And then you'd have to go one way or the other on that. But yep, their, their consistency isn't required on particularism. No, no, there's problems to not being consistent. But if you can name the trait, then your position at least can theoretically be consistent if it doesn't have some other problem with it. But I'm hogging now, so I'll pass it back to Avi. Yeah, well, I'm not following why a person, what would somebody would have to be consistent about, right, if one were a particularist, since there isn't actually a principle being appealed to, what would make them inconsistent? I didn't, I didn't say that they would be inconsistent. If you're rejecting the second premise, usually you have a position that is consistent. What becomes inconsistent, like Jack, you, you would agree that even as a particularist, if you make the statement, X does and doesn't have value, all else held constant, you're contradicting yourself, correct? Well, again, you're not You're not making that statement, I understand that, but even as a particularist, if you make that statement, X does and doesn't have value, all else held constant, that's still a contradiction. Logic still exists for particulars. Well, it depends on how we cash out that, um, that utterance, right? We can understand it to mean that there are considerations in favor of it and considerations against it. So no, 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 the consider Jack, the considerations, when I say all else held constant, we are holding those constant. Whatever considerations apply, apply equally to both. Well, I mean, a relativist could say that something... Jack, Jack sorry, I got, I got to push you on this, because you already conceded to this earlier, and it's not, it's not even a point against your position. I'm just trying to spell out the problem. You're, you're asking... Well, where is the contradiction? I'm not necessarily saying that you have a contradiction because you appear to be naming a trait. The contradiction arises if you actually can't name the trait. And the contradiction exists even on particularism. If a particularist, I mean, lots of us are particularists about, about 
aesthetics, right? About what, what our taste uh, preference is, for example. It would still be a logical contradiction for me to say, my favorite taste is and isn't green apple flavor, all else held constant. That's just saying something and it's negation. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yes, okay, so now what I'm saying is if instead of naming the trait my subjective assignment of moral value, you actually said there is no trait, the objects are reducible to one another with differential moral status, you're not naming the moral status as the trait, that's where you enter contradiction territory. Now you have not gone there, but when we're talking about inconsistency, that's where we'd be going, and that would apply equally to someone who's a particularist. I see. Okay, and now I'll pass it to Avi. I just didn't want to go misunderstood there. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I would hash out. So you've, you've named the trait, right? The trait is your particular. That is the trait. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, the argument wouldn't be invalid. You would say it's not sound because you've rejected P2. Mm -hmm, that's right. And, yeah. So name the trait would be a valid argument. You'd say it's not sound because I have a particular. And in this context, my particular is, well, they're not val I don't value them, uh, and I don't need to be consistent about my evaluation. It's just uh -huh. my particular. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's a consistent position, Jack. Um, yeah. yeah. So what it's, I'm saying is the name the trait argument is impotent against a position like that, right? Well, it's it, in what sense are you saying it's impotent? If you're saying it, it, the only way it can be potent is to demonstrate logical consistency, then yeah, it's impotent, but that's not what the argument is meant to do. The argument is meant to sort views into two variants. Well, the well, argument I, is all meant I meant by saying it was impotent was that if somebody were not a vegan on that basis, it wouldn't be an argument that could establish that they ought to be a vegan. Oh, for them, no, yeah. No, people can have, yeah. I mean, it's not just particularists that can take that position, too. A, a, a non-vegan can have a consistent position that, the morally right thing to do in principle is to just kill all animals. And, and that would be an, it would be an impotent argument. If you're measuring the potency of an argument by the ability to convert that person, then yeah, it would be an impotent argument. They can have a consistent position against that, consistent principle with position against that. And there's nothing inconsistent about it. The only thing we can say is that that's kind of a crazy position, and that's and that we can't well, have a basis for that. I don't know what you mean by crazy there. It it just means we we disagree with it. That's it's like it's not. I'm not saying that there's a just some founding justification or basis for disagreeing with it. It's just well, for example, when we look at someone who goes around saying my position is to murder a, a bunch of humans, that's his like. Let's say that he had that position. Now he's let's say and let's say he's airtight and consistent about that. What can we say about a position like that? Not much. We can't say it's logically, we can't say anything on the grounds of logic. We can't say it's logically inconsistent. All we can say is to ourselves, we think that's crazy. Okay, that's fine. But I, I thought that was what Manny was arguing. And so I didn't understand why there was a claim that Manny had lost the debate. Right? When all Manny had done was to defend a position like mine, as I understand. Yeah, well, the only thing that yeah, the only thing that can be done is to just show that well, listen, you have a consistent position, but most people, it seems like most people, if we're if we're gonna have a debate like a public debate, most people would see where your position lies and say that's crazy. And the the thing about moral particularism is just with the absence of in the absence of any principles, um, basically it's just your particular. So your if your particular is to slaughter a bunch of humans, that's your particular. That's yeah, your but, particular. Yeah, but that, I'm not seeing how that's addressing what I was saying, right? When I was listening to the debate, right, people were coming in and saying Manny had lost the debate, right? And I, took it that, yeah. I took it that they meant that Manny had somehow contradicted himself, right? Oh, oh no, 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 no. There, there's a big problem right there. When, when we say someone has lost the debate in here, we don't strictly mean that they've contradicted themselves. So, Jack, there's tons, I'm sure you'd acknowledge this, tons of moral positions that are totally consistent, and by the general moral standards that most people hold, you know, having concerns for rights and well-being and stuff like this, those positions would be insane. So, like, Hannibal Lecter has a consistent position 
but that would be something that most people would reject as an insane position. So in the context of a moral discussion, the win condition isn't just a proof of contradiction. By that logic, Hannibal Lecter wins moral debates. I think what most people would accept as a win condition is if the other guy gets reduced to saying something like, you know, I don't have a problem with the Holocaust or a Holocaust is fine if I like it. If they get into any territory like that, I think it's pretty safe to say that they've lost the debate. So that that's what we're talking about. We're not always talking about inconsistency. Losing a moral debate doesn't always come down to being inconsistent. So it's some kind of appeal to popularity. Is that the idea? Nope. No one's saying that something is true by virtue of the fact that most people believe it. So no. I thought you were saying it was true that he lost the debate. It's true with respect to any kind of standard that cares about basic human rights, yeah. Right, that's an appeal to popularity, right? No, that's just an appeal to anyone who holds the standard of basic human rights. It would still be true even if that was a minority. Well, I, didn't, I don't think he said he didn't believe in basic human rights, right? Well, the statement he ended up making was that the Holocaust doesn't have a negative moral status in his subjective view, which is not even a view that you hold. I mean, you've just said in your subjective view, you actually hold the position that stabbing someone in the throat is wrong. I'm sure I can infer from there that you also, in your subjective view, would say that the Holocaust is wrong. Yeah, but if I said the Holocaust was right, right, and there was nothing inconsistent about that, right, what you're saying is, is that I would lose the debate for saying that because most people disagree with it, right? Yeah, you, with, with respect to anyone who holds any kind of axiom along the lines of like maximizing well-being or basic human rights, you would lose the debate by getting reduced to that. Yeah. Well, I don't know what you mean by maximizing well-being. Well, we don't need that to autistically nitpick. I'm, I'm saying anyone who holds any moral position that where their base axiom is just not going to allow for a Holocaust, if you get reduced to saying something like the Holocaust is good, with respect to anyone who holds those positions, which is the majority of society, you've lost the debate. It's not, it's not making a logical claim that you've actually contradicted yourself. A lot of right, people contradict that. themselves in here, but yeah, that's not what, what we're I, always saying. I understand that, but you, what I was contesting was that you said it was not an appeal to popularity. Yeah, because no one's saying that the truth of something comes down to how many people believe it. We're saying you've lost yeah, the debate saying, with respect to anyone who holds a system that values those rights. Yeah. Yeah, but when I said it was an appeal to popularity, I didn't mean to say that the claim was that you had made um, that you had taken a position, right? Which people um, agree. Yeah, would I still make the same claim if if one person held that position? I don't. I don't know. I would. It's not an appeal to popularity. I'm not saying anything is true or moral by virtue of how many people believe it. That's just not what I'm saying. And if anyone's recording, you can quote me. Wait, I've never said I'm still that. not understanding what you're saying, right? So if, if the majority of people... Jack, right, here, let me explain. If someone's unmoving base fundamental axiom doesn't allow for X and your system justifies X, that can be shown, then with respect to their system, you have lost the debate. Right, so that's an appeal to popularity, right? No, Jack, where, okay, where in there have I said that the truth or morality of something hinges on how many people believe. I don't think you're understanding what I mean. So what I'm saying is, if it were, well, let me, let me ask you to maybe explain. So if it were the case that the majority of people, right, agreed with the person, the debate, right, who um, you're saying lost the debate, right, would they still have lost? I'm, I'm actually so astounded that you're asking me that. They would have lost with respect to the moral system of anyone who has a base axiom that does oh. not allow for a Holocaust. When you, say, when you say you lost the debate, you mean with respect to me, right? I mean with respect to anyone who holds, not just me, with respect to anyone who holds an axiom that's fundamentally not going to allow for a Holocaust. No, no, no. I'm not following that. Okay. Why is that, I'm, why, what, what is it that makes that the criterion for winning rather than losing the debate? I don't it's, get it. The criterion for winning is going to depend on the individual person. Not everyone's going to perceive the same thing as a win or a loss. Even, so then, Jack, Jack even, in a logical, you... even in a logical debate, the same thing is happening. Okay, When you show that someone has contradicted themselves, 
they haven't lost the debate in the mind of someone who doesn't care about logic, okay? Right. They've lost the debate with respect to anyone who cares about logic, with respect to anyone who bootstraps logic as an axiom. It's the same thing here. They've Point lost is, the debate with respect to anyone who bootstraps the wrongness of the Holocaust as an axiom, or bootstraps an axiom that logically concludes there. I'm not really following that language there, but let me, let me just clarify. So if I say Manny has won the debate, because by my lights, right, he had the better position. Does that mean, that, am I mistaken about that? With respect to a given system, that may be true. With respect to another system, it may not. It okay. depends on the system. Okay, so then by lost the debate, you just meant people who, <clears throat> who actually think that not condemning the Holocaust <clears throat> in some specific way, right, um, uh, they're just going to reject his conclusion. Yes. Okay. But for other people who don't have a problem with his conclusion, he won the debate, right? That doesn't necessarily follow, but it may be that he lost one, came out in the middle. It may be that he just has another status with respect to winning to people who don't share that same view on the Holocaust. Okay. Well, I think I understand what you were saying. Yeah. So... The, the reason that it might come off as an appeal to popularity when it isn't is because I make statements like the vast majority of people hold a system that rejects the Holocaust. The reason we're concerned with things like that is because fundamentally, if we can reduce all carnists to one of the following two things, either inconsistency, which in principle would justify all actions, or an absurd position that justifies something like the Holocaust, which cuts against the uh, moral views of the majority of the population. As long as we can keep doing that, we will gradually push people towards veganism. And then when there's enough of us, we can just legislate against the rest. So the goal in a moral debate fundamentally is to persuade the majority of people listening. If you reduce the other guy to a statement like, oh, you know, the Holocaust, yeah, meh. It's, I mean, they have lost the debate in the eyes of anyone who holds a moral system that values basic human rights, which happens to be most people, which means that we've achieved our purpose as vegans in a debate. Yeah, but it would have been a simple matter for uh, Manny to sidestep that, right, if he had taken my approach. Well, you probably know how to think of it better than him. Wow. Your, your approach still leads to crazy land. If your particular is that you want to rape a child, then that's fine by your system. Most people will reject your system right there. If I show that that's your position in a debate, you lost in the eyes of most people. Um, yeah, well, I think, I think that you have a sort of a different aim than I have, right? What is your aim? Well, my aim is merely to have a position, right, which survives criticism. Mm, I think your aims are more than that. I think that there's multiple moral positions that would survive criticism, as in they would come out being logically consistent. There's something more to it than that when you're selecting which moral position you want. I don't know what you have in mind. Okay, so would you agree that the position that I hate everything and I want everything to die, everything has negative moral value, is a consistent position? I guess so. You hold that position? No. So obviously that establishes the fact that there's something other than consistency that you're concerned with when it comes to adopting a moral system. Yeah, I'm talking about, I'm talking about my position, right? I'm not talking about any consistent position, right? I want to have my position be a consistent one. Yes, but the, the how we got here was you said that you have a different goal in debate than me, and you said that your goal was to have a position that stands up to criticism. So my response to that is, I think you actually have more goals than that. I don't think you just want a position that stands up to criticism, as in a position that is logically coherent, because there's plenty of moral systems that are logically coherent that you would just dismiss as being batshit insane. So you're probably going for something like trying to find a position that is both consistent and that your preferences align with. Well, I wouldn't put it in terms of preferences, but yeah, values. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I don't care about the language of preferences or values, just that, I, that you align I, with. But the point I'm trying to make is, right, that it's not about trying to get people to accept my values, right? No, I, I didn't say that it has to be. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter to me, 
but right. now you're defining it in the negative in terms of what you're not trying to do. Like, I, I don't care about semantically nitpicking this. It's just a minute ago, you said what you were trying to do is just have a position that stands up to criticism. I put a bit of pressure on that. You say, well, stands up to criticism and, uh, you know, encapsulates my values. And now you're, now you're instead of defining what you're trying to do, now you're defining what you're not trying to do, which is persuade others. So I never said that you're necessarily trying to persuade others. But Although that's, if that that's were that's your position, you would fail the second you hold this kind of angle. But, but that's what I meant when I said, right, that you and I probably have different aims. Sure. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter to me, right, that people say, oh, that position is crazy. I don't share it. Right? Oh, yeah. No, no. What what matters to me is just that people understand how to get to the logical conclusion of your position and how to spell it out clearly for everyone to see. Because I'm confident that most humans fundamentally value things like rights and like well-being and will not accept a position that in principle justifies all actions. So... For me, the concern is more about the people in here learning to extract what your system, which I consider profoundly evil, actually says so they can expose it to others and then have others be persuaded away from your system. Yeah, I understand that. But for me, it's it's just not it's just a, it's just an irrelevant matter whether the majority is persuaded of my conclusion or not. Well, it's irrelevant to the truth of the matter. It's irrelevant to whether the position is consistent. It could even be irrelevant to whether you are going to hold the position or not. But it's certainly relevant to us. So if you just want to say that you have different aims, then that's totally fine. But well, that, that's what I said at the outset. The, the things, the issues that I picked up on during this discussion. In fact, I'm to totally cucking off. Avi, you can talk. Oh, wait. I'm, I was, like, falling asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, uh, yeah, I mean, your your aim is, um, I mean, I'm not actually sure what your aim at Hangstrike is, but the point is that for, for vegans, and for in terms of it being a relevant thing, it, it would be relevant to be able to show the logical extensions of your moral system or lack of system, or principles or lack of principles, and what that leads to, and for people to get off board with that, on board with veganism. And the reason that is relevant, because it's relevant just pragmatically, because if we get enough people, we can just legislate against people from eating animals. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. I'm just saying that all I was concerned to show, right, was that you guys didn't actually have an argument against my position. Right. Well, an argument. Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're defining. It's like if you're, if you're saying if when you what you mean when you say we don't have an argument against your position, you mean well, you're not going to be able to show it to be logically inconsistent. If that's what you're saying, well, then, you, could you, know, show it, you could show it to be false in other ways, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Or if you 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 can't show it to you can't verify the negation of your system, or you cannot show your system to be logically inconsistent. If that's the metric by which you're saying you don't have an argument against it. Sure. But again, yeah, like yeah. a lot of people, like when, uh, what we view it in terms of the way we view this is that an argument against your position would, would not be limited to those things. An argument against your position would just be in, in terms of being effective pragmatically, which would just yeah, it may be, well be effective pragmatically, right? I don't take a position on that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, assuming it was effective, and by effective pragmatically, I mean just getting a bunch of people off your position onto our position and just eventually just legislating against your position. Yeah, in, in the sense of what follows from it. Yeah, I mean, invalid arguments can be pragmatically effective too, right? So I don't have. And, and, and Angstrom, just, and Angstrom just, just to be clear, when I mean that, when I'm referring to that kind of argument, I'm not saying it's like valid in the sense that it leads to a truth or, or falsity of your position. Yeah, I understand that. Right. But see, what I understood the, the name, the trade argument to be, right, was an argument that could show that anybody who who eats meat, right, is somehow um, admired in some kind of moral contradiction. Right. And that's all. No. Yeah, 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 that's not what name the trade is meant to do. Right. I understand that. It's, it's a sorting mechanism, Angstrike. It sorts people into either consistent but absurd, like you, where you have a consistent position that in principle justifies all actions, including infinite suffering, if you prefer it, 
uh, or into the category of inconsistent. So it's just it's just a sorting mechanism. It's not a claim that all anti-vegan positions are logically contradictory. Yeah, although the word absurd there is a little bit misleading, right? <clears throat> Oh, absurd! It's it just absurd to whom, right? I mean, it's well, I, think, I think what you mean is is that it's a position which is unpopular, right? Well, no, I mean it's it's a position which is unfavored among certain people who hold specific axioms. Yeah. So to so, those, to those yeah. people, it's unpopular. Well, it could be popular. It could not be popular. I well, mean, if no, if, no, if no, there no, was if most if, people yeah. actually shared my conclusion, right? It wouldn't actually be pragmatically effective. So. Yeah, that's true. It wouldn't be pragmatically effective. That's correct. Yeah. If, if so, just this, if, what we can say is we couldn't say it'd be pragmatically effective at that point. What we would say is that it's just it, we could say lose with respect to just someone who holds an axiom similar to us. You would say when, you would not lose to someone saying uh, holds an axiom similar to you. Now it just happens yeah, to me yeah. like in and and in that sense, winning or losing the debate. In that sense, if you, when we're talking about pragmatics, again, winning or losing the debate, it's not about showing your position was false. It's not about showing your position is inconsistent. It's not about verifying the negation of your position. It, it can be, though, if your position is actually false or inconsistent. Yeah, I, yeah. I understand. Yeah, so yeah. that's just the goal. That's, that's the goal of naming the trade. It's just, it's not, it doesn't have to always end up showing the position is false or inconsistent. Yeah, and so with respect to the two topics that I've heard come up here, which are the validity of name the trait, um, and then the uh, whether what's-his-name lost the debate, I think we're in agreement that the argument is perfectly valid. You're just rejecting one of the premises. So I think yeah. we're on the same page there. Yeah. And with respect, and wait, just let me finish. And then with respect to the guy losing the debate, you understand that what we're saying is basically twofold, that he has lost with respect to anyone who holds an axiom that fundamentally doesn't allow for the Holocaust. And then the second fold is just that that is most of the population. Uh, presumably, yeah. Okay, so we don't actually have any disagreement there. We disagree on your moral system, but in terms of the validity of name the trait and what we mean when we say someone is losing the debate or has lost the debate, I think we have clarity at this point. Yeah. I guess I think um, the question that I would have is sort of um, what it is that um, you think, it, to your mind, justifies rejection of particularism. Well, I mean, if no one's going to talk, I'll talk. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I just would not hold particularism because in principle it justifies all actions. I don't think we should hold systems that in principle justify all actions. You can if you want to. I wouldn't. Yeah, but isn't that the same thing as just restating that you reject it? I'm just asking. You, you, wait, no, no, no. You didn't, you didn't ask if I reject it or not. If you, said, if you asked that, I would have said I reject it. You asked why do I reject it? And I spelt out the reasoning. I spelt out what it conflicts with with respect to what I care about. I care about a system not in principle justifying all actions. Well, it doesn't actually justify all actions, right? Consistent with any potential justification, right? Particularism is not actually justified. Let me, let me rephrase. In principle can justify all actions. No, I don't think particularism justifies anything. Well, let's be clear. When you say you're a particularist, you are subjectively assigning moral status to actions, right? Like we established before, you subjectively assign the status wrong to the Holocaust? Yes. Yeah, of course. So, in principle, you can assign via particularism whatever moral status you want to whatever action. There's not a deeper principle it's than not, just your particulars. Not. It's not a question of assigning moral value to what you want, right? The idea is that you perceive moral values, right? And 
what you take to be the right or the wrong action, right, is not going to be explained by a principle, right? Yeah. So is there any action that you, in principle, keyword being principle, would be able to say is always wrong, even in a particularist framework? I mean, people can differ on that. But right. the, the principled answer is no. I mean, unless you hold a particular system that that's, uh, excludes certain actions. But in principle, if you're a particularist, if what you're saying is that the assignment of moral value, just it just comes down to what I subjectively perceive to be valuable. You know, it just if, if, I, if I see something as good, it's good. If I see it as bad, it's bad. There's no underlying principles. The fundamental reality there is that that can justify anything. Yeah, but principles can. Well, no, not not not. Yeah, but yeah is the Wait important point, and that's why I reject case, particular. Is it the case that principles can't justify anything? Principles broadly spoken about could justify anything. Particularism yeah. could be told to talked about as a principle. Okay, if you're conceding that principles can justify anything, right? Then obviously your problem with particularism can't be that it's unprincipled, right? So that wouldn't be a good objection. So what I'm asking you is... Well, no, no, no. The, the, the problem right there is that I hold principles that would not allow for a Holocaust to be justified. That's right? fine. That's fine. So, but I didn't ask yeah, you that. Yeah, but, but particularism, that is not a moral system that is going to, in principle, say such a thing about a Holocaust. Okay. I don't think you're really following what I'm trying to get at. So let me see if I can spell it out, right? If I have a particularist objection to a Holocaust, right, that's just as much an objection to the Holocaust as if I have a principled objection to the Holocaust, right? If I have a particularist um, uh, um, judgment in favor of a Holocaust, right, that's just as much a consideration in favor of a Holocaust for that individual as it would be for somebody who has some kind of principle in favor of holocausts, right? So if you're trying to actually talk about a specific content that you object to, right, it's not actually the case that particularism or what I'll, I'll call universalism, the contrary thesis, it's not actually the case that particularism or universalism, right, entail um, any content, right? So it wouldn't, be, uh, it wouldn't be a legitimate objection to say that the reason why I object to particularism is because particularism could be used to justify things that I judge to be evil. Because somebody who has a principled view, a universalist view, could have principles that justify those same evils. Right? Yeah, but I think that the problem what you're doing there is you're just contrasting particularism to just this broad, vague, general category of principled positions. You could have whatever fucking principled position you want. And I would say that some principled positions are wrong with respect to my principled position, just yeah. like I would say that particularism is wrong with respect yeah. to my principled position. That, that's fine, right? What I, was asking, what I was asking for was whether you thought there was a justification for rejecting particularism, right? Because... If somebody had um, particular judgments, right, that aligned with all your principal judgments, right, but they didn't appeal to a principle to justify or explain them, right, you couldn't say, oh, that person has judgments which legitimize things that I oppose, right, because they wouldn't in that case. Right? No, but their system in principle would justify any of those things if they just particularly want to do those things. No, I, so, I don't think I'm following what I'm saying. Oh, I'm following what you're saying. I think that you are not following what I'm saying. So, Jack, I'll put it to you nice and clearly, okay? My system does not allow for a Holocaust. Is that clearly understood? All right. Particularism doesn't fundamentally oppose a Holocaust. And falsely contrasting particularism with principled views, instead of contrasting particularism with my specific principled view is basically just a red herring. Okay, well, let me try to pose the objection in a way that'll make it clearer, I think, 
right? Sure. Do you think that universalism is consistent, can be consistent with holocausts? Sure, obviously. Okay. Right. And you also think that particularism can be consistent with opposing holocausts, right? Well, it depends what you mean. In principle, particularism doesn't actually take any stance on a holocaust. That's the problem with it. Yeah, yeah. in principle, does universalism take a stance on a holocaust? Nope. And I'm going to ask you if you notice the red herring that you're dropping right now. I don't think it's a red herring. It is a red herring. You're targeting universalism broadly, which is not what I'm defending. I'm defending well, a specific asked, system. What I asked you, right, was if you thought there was a consideration right, that could justify universalism over particularism. Again, my, my dog in the fight is not defending universalism broadly, because there's universalist positions that are profoundly evil. As I've explained countless times in my videos and in this Discord, there's tons of consistent principled positions that are just dark. I mean, you can go back in this recording that I'm assuming Baconbone is taking right now, and you will hear me saying Correct. Hannibal Lecter's <laughs> Hannibal Lecter's position is fully logically consistent and it's completely fucking evil, right? Right. And presumably, so when, so when you start attacking universalism and contrasting it with particularism, and then asking me to defend universalism, it's a red herring because I'm not here to defend universalism broadly. I'm defending my specific position. I didn't ask you to defend universalism broadly. I think particularism broadly fails because in principle it doesn't justify it just any any action could be justified universalism there are specific universal systems that i don't think fail by my standards uh, and then there are universal I, I systems I that i'll reject so that would be the issue there are no i don't get it right there are particularist systems that are that could in print well i shouldn't say in principle there are particularist views right somebody could have a set of moral views, right, that are understood to be particularist in character, right, with respect to any outcome that's consistent with all the things that you take to be good and evil, right? So presumably, you wouldn't actually have an objection to that view, right? I've spelt out my objection repeatedly. I don't get it. The objection is that, in principle, it justifies all actions. If you, Jack, if tomorrow you wake up and you prefer to rape a child, is that ethical by your system? If Please don't pussyfoot. Up. Please don't pussyfoot. Clear answer. It is. Yeah. Yes. But in principle... And, and, Jack, and Jack, that is my problem with your system, right? Yeah, but I don't get it, right? You can wake up the next day and have different principles, right? Or nope. No, 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 no. That is a wrong move because my current principles absolutely do not justify that. In principle, right now, my system does not justify that. In principle, your system right now is ambiguous towards that. It just has a practical opposition because of your preferences or your values. I'm not seeing what difference that makes. It's a massive difference. In principle, your system doesn't make a statement about a Holocaust. In principle, my system does make a statement about a Holocaust. Yeah, if, but that I, is not, I, if that's not a clear moral issue to you, I don't know what would be. Well, I'm trying to understand, right, if you think there are considerations that justify um, being a particularist, I'm sorry, being a universalist over being a particularist. No, there are certain particularist positions that I, I would rather someone be a Jack Angstreich variety particularist than a Hannibal Lecter variety universalist. Yeah, but see, the question that I'm concerned with, right, is not actually the specific content, right? I'm concerned with the meta-ethical issue, right? The meta-ethical issue is, is there an argument that can be given, right, to favor universalism over particularism. Right? All right, so I've spelled out my issue with what you're doing there, I think about three times, maybe four, so I'm going to just call that a red herring at this point. Well, maybe there's somebody else here who understands my objection. I understand your objection perfectly well. I think that the thing you're not tracking is that you keep going to this red herring, which is trying to have me defend universalism broadly versus particularism broadly. Well, I don't I defend asking. universalism broadly. I defend a specific ethical system, 
And I would defend that against just some broad, vague, universal position, just as I would against particularism. Yeah, but when if I say to you what justifies your specific moral system, right? Presumably it's nothing, right? Presumably it's just that is the system that you hold to be correct, right? Well, of course. Yeah, okay. So that's not the issue that I'm concerned with, right? The issue that I'm concerned with is whether you think, right, there's a way to justify universalism over particularism. Okay, and have you heard me make any statement about that at all? I just asked you the question. So, no, what I've been talking about consistently this entire time is my specific ethical system. I have a general issue with particularism because particularism does not take a principled stance against anything. It doesn't take a principled stance against a Holocaust. It doesn't take a principled stance against changing the well-being to suffering ratio in the universe to infinite suffering versus infinites infinitesimal well-being. See, it's... I don't please really don't respond by saying a principled system can do the same thing. I'm tired of that red herring. Well, I, you see, I don't understand why you think that's an answer to the question, right? If you what, say, what's the question? The question is, do you think there are considerations, right, that favor universalism over particularism? Right? Okay, so I, I don't know how I could be any more clear. I am not. Well, let me, let me I'm be, not. Let me Jack, do you, Jack, 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 do you think that I am defending? Just universalism per se. I have no idea. I I'm simply not. asked. I simply asked, right, whether you thought that there were considerations that could favor universalism or particularism, right? And what I'm not understanding is why you would think it's an answer to the question to say that the reason why you reject particularism is because it doesn't uphold principles. Or some, some specific set of principles. There you go. Some specific right. set of principles. Yeah, that's not an answer to the question, right? Well, it's that's it's saying that's just saying, right, that I'm a universalist and I'm this kind of universalist, and therefore I reject particularism. Well, no, where where this where this started from was you asking about an objection to particularism, and I think that the record will actually show that, and I think that you then sort of shifted into this question of particularism versus universalism, trying to pigeonhole me into defending universalism. I don't, I don't, I don't see what difference it makes if the question was phrased, do you have an Oh, they're, they're, hu they're hugely different questions. Saying, well, let me, let me try. Wait, no, 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 one, one second, one second. That's a very important thing, okay? Asking, do I have a problem with particularism is a different question than saying, do you favor universalism over um, particularism, just both simpliciter, both per se? It's a completely different question. Do you have a problem with X versus do you favor Y over X? That's that's the a difference is, of question. Right. The question is, are there considerations, right, that would justify rejecting particularism, right, over, I'm sorry, rejecting particularism at the and accepting universalism, right?